think it's working. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Istio Networking Community Meeting. Uh, we have quite a few items on the agenda today, and uh, my, pro uh, my proposal was to allocate about like 20 minutes to each of them. Um, the first one is um, um, a CNI extension demo. And John will uh, will give us the demo. There is an also an associated document, but I'm not sure, John, if you want to like review it today or wait till next time. It's up to you. The second item will have to we will have to make a community decision around uh, traffic ownership, controlling policy governance with this authorization. So um, and the third, uh, uh, okay, we actually have four items now. <laughs> uh, discuss sidecar lifecycle manager. A management by Robert and also the Istio CNI status. So we basically have two themes. One is around like CNI plugins and uh, all the all the features we can do with uh, by using CNI plugins. And the second one is around like virtual services and um, scoping and ownership and policy control. Okay. Oh, okay. Anyway. All right, so uh, John, are you ready to start uh, with your demo? Maybe he's not here yet. Let's see here, actually. Uh, John, are, are you online? All right, uh, then he may not be yet here. So I wonder if we can... Uh, Discuss the traffic ownership first. Then, uh, Andrew, are you are you oh. here? Hi, I'm here. Oh, Hi, okay. can you? This is John. Can you hear us? Oh, okay, John. Okay, so then we'll go in the in the original order. Uh, John, Sorry, uh, are, are you able to to give us the demo? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, please feel free to present. Yeah. Do you try the other slides there? Yes. Can you see our slides? No, Not yet. It might be there. Uh, no. Present now, yes, there you go. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah. Okay. Is anybody else able there. to? Okay, now we're, uh, it's loading. Perfect. Okay. So let's go through it. Let's maybe go go to the diagram number slide number three. So go through this quickly. Just a couple of slides to set the context. So, you know, lot of thanks to Tim and Robert because we're extending their work. We're leveraging that pretty heavily. So, um, so what we want to do is show how to sort of insert a generic network proxy using network namespaces and do some rewiring that will think add some interesting tweaks to how we can deploy proxies into Istio. Next slide. So what we've done for the architecture is really, if you think of on the left-hand side, what you have today is Envoy's running as a sidecar. So what we've done is created a new network namespace and deployed into that network namespace and then rewired the network for using VEs. The IP address is still the same IP address that's allocated by Kubernetes, so there's no changes. All it is is really a bump in the wire of traffic going from in and out of the pod. This gives me a couple of advantages. It means that all traffic is guaranteed to go through the proxy. There's no need to do IP tables mucking around to try and figure out how to ensure traffic goes through with TCP, UDP, IPv4, IPv6, it'll all go through the, the proxy's namespace. Next. So, so it all goes through the proxy's namespace. Do you have to do anything in particular in the Envoy network namespace to get it to go through Envoy? Good question. We haven't done anything with Envoy yet. So we've just used our sample VNF proxy, which is basically a bump in the wire, and we don't do anything. Basically, we take packets in and packets out. I don't think there's anything to be done to Envoy. I need to go and look at it. That's one of the sort of action items we have. Because as far as Envoy is seeing, is just seeing an interface. Well, so you, be, you, you need yeah, to but Envoy doesn't listen to interfaces. Envoy opens sockets. Yeah, so it, it can open a socket quite. It's just it's just a 
they're sitting in a namespace, so packets will come in looking for a connection. If Envoy is listening, it will connect to them. It's, it's a bit more complicated here because because uh, the packet go to a VIP, and Envoy right now is listening to a particular VIP. But I think it is possible with uh, with some changes to Envoy to to um, and with net admin privilege to to bind to a particular VIP and capture the traffic. It's, okay. it's okay. already done. Okay, I mean, I, I think that's one of the big things to figure out how to make this generic and what has to be done. There's other proxies apart from Envoy. There's NGX and a bunch of others who are. I think, you know, try make, you make this as generic as possible so it's not tied to one particular technology. And we need to figure out. The, the, the interface based one, is that a layer two interface or layer three interface? So I say that again, please? Uh, the V is that one uh, in the picture. Is what? Uh, and what, you know, that, does it have a, a um, IP no, address? No, no, no IP address. Oh. So the, the IP address is still on v0, or so it's still the same IP address is allocated by Kubernetes. So there's no changes to the networking, which we thought was really important to keep um, it as simple as possible. So you're using a separate routing table? Question though, right? I mean, if you're doing this, then the original destination being requested is probably going to be lost, isn't it? Or I don't know if it is lost. Or no, because because ARP will still work. It's still it's still ARP out. It says out to the bridge. The bridge says, oh, if you want to get to this IP address, this is the this is the Ethernet the VET you go on. It just follows uh, it. No, but that's not what I'm asking you. I mean, but today right. this like the uh, SO original destination, which the kernel actually preserves and says if I was cap traffic was captured and rerouted to something else. Then this was the actual port and IP address that was, that was requested by the caller, and that's what we actually use with Envoy to determine. Shriram, I can confirm that it's preserved. I mean, I, I've done similar things with tun Tunnel, and, and it, it is preserved. Yeah, the destination IP should be preserved. There is no manipulation of the packet. I mean, it's just a routing table that is uh, setting the default route. The original destination, the socket option that we actually use, and that's what Envoy uses to actually obtain the you know, the port and IP. The virtual listener, yeah, of course, it'll still contain the same thing, right? But, but you only need to call original desk because we have IP tables rules rewriting yeah. the packet. And in this case, there aren't IP tables rules, Shriram. So oh, the virtual oh, service oh, is oh, gone. OK, sorry, I got the yeah, uh, The virtual, the virtual listener will be replaced by this other option, which is binding each listener directly. to. So, so instead of uh, having a single bound on 15,000, we'll have bound on each particular uh, IP. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, sorry. So, so we can follow up with yeah. this that how do you restrict the, I mean, today we, people actually use this include IP ranges in order to get an escape hatch if they have one too many service entries, I mean, one too many external services and they would like to like, you know, allow all traffic external services to go through assets. In. And with this method, every, I mean, all traffic will definitely enter Envoy. And so we need a way in which we can accomplish traffic. I believe I believe you can still use IP tables to redirect stuff. I mean, you you, you still have control to say some packets based on whatever will go directly to it to V to the real interface. I cannot pronounce that, and and only route some specific. I mean, you can you, you can you can. It's basically you specify a different routing table for for uh, different packets. Well, my question is this, right? The IP address is associated with Ethernet zero, right? Which is yes. different than namespace. And Envoy proxy will be dealing with layer two interfaces. How does it? How is it uh, able to uh, make layer two connection with the, uh, you know, with pilot? Oh, John, do you have like working code for this yet? Yeah, we have we have, work, we have it working with with our VE. So we we'll show a, we we'll show a demo of it just now. Okay. okay. Like, the questions with with Envoy are very apropos, and we need to figure those out. But what I just wanted to show just now is the fact that with the extending you know, Tim and Robert's work, we can actually do this fairly simply. And we have a sample, just a sample code that's basically just a, a packet mmap bumping a wire that um, moves packets from ETH v ETH1, ETH0 to ETH1 and out to ETH2. So it's just a, a simple demo to try and show that the the mechanics of building it is fairly simple. I think there's a lot of good questions here about how it would actually work with Envoy and you know, TCP proxies. I don't think there's any major problems. 
you know, we need to, but the devils are always in the details. So let's go to the next slide and let's go through this fairly quickly and then we can we can talk more. I think Robert's item is probably um, can touch a lot of this as well. So a lot of stuff here is we're doing the same things that um, Tim Tim's work did. Um, you know, we're only using Envoy's only in the network namespace. It's also in the existing pod namespace. So there's been some discussion last week about how to get keys and mount keys. So Envoy would see the, the same mount points in the pod as everybody else sees. Um, question for the Google people is, you know, this works with CNI, you know, for the GKE. Uh, uh, this has not been touched on, just I want to throw it out there as a discussion point. Yeah, I think you can um, yeah we, we remove the need to manipulate IP tables. So if an app is not really well behaved, we don't really care because it's um, its own network namespace is controlled. This isolation well, of the proxy well, from technically, technically, an, an application misbehavior application can modify, modify the routes and kind of bypass the proxies. Just only like. if there's cabinet admin. No, but then the IP table requires the same capability. So whatever you are doing, the manipulate the IP table is equivalent to manipulating routes. Right, so you should do it with the privilege before yeah. you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, so you have a little more control. Um, yeah, it, it works with, is, this is just some direct stuff from Tim, it works with any CNI. For us, it's interesting because the CNI gives us some interesting information like the, the bridge name and IP address. So using CNI works really well compared to some of the previous approaches we've we'll tried to do. Yeah. Um, control of all the traffic works by IP, IPv4, IPv6. The proxy can now do some certain things with, um, it can have a little more privileges because it's installed from someplace else. It can have um, the ability to use packet MMAP or SRV or other things it would be interesting. I thought about chaining boxes together. I think Costa mentioned in the email that bad idea because of latency. Totally agree. Just throwing it out there as a you know as a thing to think about. Yeah. Okay. Next. This is kind of just how the flow works. So the, the really additional step we've added from you know Tim and Tim's work is really the proxy insertion. And this is where there's, there's some discussion we'd like to have. So basically, you deploy a daemon set for the CNI, the same as Tim did. Um, then you deploy some proxy insertion mechanism, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Once the pod's deployed, the, it fires off the CNI, then it starts creating to insert. First, creates the network namespace. And then it runs the proxy in that namespace and then starts receiving traffic. So fairly simple, fairly straightforward. We can make it, I think, completely transparent to the user, apart from having um, either one or two daemon sets running on the node. Next. So the demo is just this. We have you know, a couple of pods talk to each other before without anything, and the next now we have you know a couple of namespaces and we have our VNF proxies, you know, in between the traffic to visit so we can show them. So Shrad, do you want to start the demo? So basically the first thing we did is um, we took Tim's YAML file and we use it pretty much as is for the, for the session of CNI. So you see the issue node there. Can you show the YAML file? Or? So we'll probably recognize this from your know, previous discussion. This is just you know what Tim, what, what Tim was showing us before. So what we've done is if you drop into the Go code for, we've extended the, the Go code that Tim did and added essentially the ability to 
create a new network namespace. So when Tim goes and looks for the, the issue of proxy container, all we do is um, pass in a network namespace into some code we wrote before that does essentially the ETH reworking. And then once that's done, we now have a network namespace, and then we call the add sidecar, which basically then allows us to insert um, the VNF into that network namespace. So that's a fairly simple extension of, of um, the original work from Tim. So you want to show the demo pieces? Yeah, sure. So uh, for our demo, um, So this is our daemon set that is running, uh, which will go ahead and install the CNI and the uh, corresponding uh, uh, the conf list file uh, into the appropriate directory. So let me get in here. So we have mounted. So this is the CNI that basically uh, gets in, uh, copied over here, uh, which is nothing but an execution of that Go code, which goes ahead, moves that, uh, creates a new namespace, creates a new VE pair, and uh, does all the plumbing uh, for uh, the, uh, like a proxy insertion. And uh, then it will go ahead and insert the proxy also uh, right now. Uh, and then, what we are doing as part of the uh, CNI invocation in the conf list is for the demo. So we are creating a bridge right now. We're calling it like CNI zero first, and then we are calling our CNI, which is the Istio CNI, which will go ahead and <clears throat> attach to this bridge, create a new read pair and attach to this bridge. So that's our uh, uh, CNI conf file that it looks like. So I've already, I have the client and the server running. Uh, so get out of here. So I have two uh, clients and server running, which will go ahead and if I I'll go back to the slides a bit. Uh, so which basically uh, are already running in this sort of scenario where a new namespace has been created and uh, uh, they have a like a VNF, which is our currently bump in the wire uh, thing is already running in this new network namespace. And what it will do is like, once we, from the client, once we try to get a file from the server, it will go through this VNF uh, that we are running all the way out to the bridge and in here and get the file uh, from here. Uh, so, uh, before this, so if you look at uh, the original client and server, it only has like one interface, like which is ETH0. And similarly here also, there's just ETH0, but uh, let me go to into the new network namespace that we have created.
Yeah, here. Yeah, so now I'm in the new network namespace that was created. Uh, so now I'm basically inside here. Uh, uh, is where the VNF or our bump in the wire should be running. And if I do an IP link show here, these are the two interfaces, ETH1 and ETH2, that we have created. So these correspond to, in the, in the uh, diagram, these correspond to VETH1 and VETH0 that we have created. Can you show some traffic? Yeah. yeah. So this is my client, which is running, uh, and this is the server. Let me actually try running a... So, and from here, so let me try to get the file. So the basically the query goes through our bump in the wire VNF through the new network namespace into the server, which is also running a, a, a bump in the wire proxy in the new net in the in another network namespace and tries to get the file up uh, back to the client. So. As a demo, it's, it's kind of hard to also show, show this stuff because it's all just TTY. You know, we will post the code um, I think next couple of days. Let people look at it. We need to clean up a little bit. I'll post it on the GitHub so people people can take a look at it. So you go back to the slides again. And go to the so the V zero and one should really be drawn inside the new network namespace. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I was, yeah. I was doing slides. So V zero should be seen inside the new network name. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's still some open issues we see. One is, you know, how do we label and annotate and pod in network namespace? You know, we can give it specific names like HDO proxy or something. You know, there may be other ways of doing it. There are some work that. Um, Kelsey Hightower did with initial, initializers that allows annotations to allow you to tag various things you want to do, you want to initialize. Which is, and then how do you do the, the upgrade, downgrade? I mean, now it's running its own namespace. Yes, you, there's probably ways to do, to separate upgrade and downgrade of the proxy from the application. How that works as a lifecycle not quite sure yet, but I think it, it, it's, it's possible. It became a, an interesting way to upgrade the proxy infrastructure without upgrading the application infrastructure. Hey, hey John, I have a question yeah. for you. Did you actually work this with Envoy um, in that container, or just a bump in the wire type of? I just, I just did a bump in the wire because you know, just to get just to get up and running. Now we have yeah. it up and running. We can do Envoy. Maybe I'll do that for next next week. Okay, thank you. Basically, just you know, taking simple steps because <laughs> we've done the bump in the wire for some of the stuff we did with the device plugin. Just using a uh, a simple um, piece of code without having to learn Envoy and debuggability. You know, it, it, it's a challenge it, how we debug this in terms of it's now in a network separate network namespace. The good thing is applications don't see it. But the bad thing is applications don't see it and how we do, do the debugging of it. And the last thing that's not on the list is just the insertion mechanism. I talked a little bit of this, this in the paper last night. Just now we're doing it fairly simple, kind of using the same approach that Robert used. I would like to, probably more to use admission controllers or operators. It's a little more dynamic and it can isolate the permissions from the users and keep them into the daemon set. So it, it separates out um, who has certain permissions. Okay, that was it. Sorry, I feel a little longer than 20 minutes, but. No worries. I think it was an excellent demo. So thank you very much. And like the, this approach is definitely very promising. Uh, I guess that the next step would be to show how it works with Envoy. Uh, instead of that uh, VNF, uh, one right? more. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, like, I, maybe I missed this. How do you like get access to the pods? I mean, when you do this space chaining, can you actually access the pods, secret mounts, and stuff? Sorry, you, you break up a little bit. 
No, so when you do this namespace chaining with the like with bump in the wire stuff, can you access the the pod secrets and other uh, secret mounts and other things from the new network namespace? Yes, because we've only changed the network namespace. The rest of the namespaces are the same. So the mount namespaces in the VNF are the same as the pod. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there are different Unix or Linux actually namespaces. The network and the file system, and there are a few others. <laughs> Yeah. So all, all we've done is change, change the network namespace. Everything else remains remains the same. And, and that was that was for the particular reason, so we can access the mount points. Will I still be able to address this envoy using an IP? Like because we, there's also a use case within Istio where we have HTTP proxy set up, and as an application, I could just set up the HTTP proxy environment where able to directly talk to the local envoy. And whereas with the VNF, which actually becomes completely transparent within the system, and so unless there's a, it would be nice if you can actually directly address the VNF itself, if the application so desire. I, I think if you if you if you use instead of a local host, you use the IP address of uh, of the host. Everything will be visible. So anything that is bound, uh, no, any project. Think, right, the VNF does not have an IP, so it's just a, a pair like from one host to other, so other one side to the other side. And the VNF is literally a bump in the wire. It doesn't actually have like a full-on IP and a whole thing set up actually. So, so uh, I think we I think we can also we can give the the VEs the IP address of the pod. Yeah, is that yeah. So, probably a good idea? Because so it's a different traffic, network namespace, right? So yeah. you can assign IP yeah. addresses there. Uh, there may be some problems with uh, with admin port uh, on fifteen thousand and uh, fifty thousand one. I mean, uh, but we can probably manage that. It's yeah. I mean, it's a lot of details. I think. To figure out, I, oh, yeah. I think it's probably I think it's probably doable. I mean, the, the question really is, if we, can, can we make it really easy? If it if it's too complicated, then it kind of defeats the purpose. But if we can make it really simple, then it's it, it has it has more value. Well, most of it will be hidden from the user. I mean, it's it's uh, my, my my question is, uh, can we make it more secure? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm trying to figure out how much can we isolate uh, an application from from uh, from the site current whatever secrets and things that it can do. So in, in this design, I believe you are just using the network namespace and the envoy can, can run in a completely separated, uh, you know, identity, uh, everything basically, except namespace. Yeah, we, you, have, you have the op options of, of changing other namespaces as well. So yeah. we just didn't, so it's a question of, if you want access to mount namespace to get secrets, you want to keep that the same. But if you want to hide things yeah. in a different for, namespace, for, maybe maybe interesting approach. For for secrets, I'm working on a proposal to 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 kind of change a bit so we don't use uh, mounted secrets if possible. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so it, it's definitely like uh, I think we definitely need to continue the discussion Absolutely. maybe in two weeks, right? With whatever other like progress will be made, maybe with Envoy, maybe if you can yeah. also like yeah, yeah. your proposal, we put everything together and we'll be able to evaluate how well it fits the requirements, right? Like we still have to figure out the debugability aspect. Like I guess that applies to any any of the CNI option, whether sure. it's like with V or yeah, uh, we'll, we'll take a while, but I think we're making progress. Yeah. Uh, your yeah, code definitely. will be in, in the same repository with the with uh, the other. I mean, you're going to submit a PR or how? Uh, okay. Or a branch? Yeah. Or a branch or or well, whatever. Yeah, John. Let's. Uh, I, I was going to ask about that. So I think we can um, just. I think there's a bunch of other topics for the CNI um, on where you know it's under the Istio ecosystem org, and we want to potentially move it. And we've got CI that we're working on um, for that. So um, yeah, I think he can put it in a branch for now. Um, but it, it looks like he's off of an older version. So um, uh, John, let's mm -hmm. get together and figure this out for how we can. Okay, Tim. Yeah, I mean, well, I'll, I'll get. We've done the we've done a legal legal work for. Submission to HDO, so we'll just use figure out, we'll push it to a GitHub, and then we'll figure out how to merge it and figure out the the best ways to yeah get your get your latest code mm -hmm. and, and sort of modulize it a little more. I think the thing we didn't change very much your code. We just did some 
Yeah. So yeah, well, uh, we can. I, I think uh, not to. Let's let's just we figure that out. Very quick question okay. on on you mentioned the uh, CI. Uh, so for, for testing perspective, what exactly is? I mean, I suppose Circle CI is not usable for this. Uh, so uh, yeah, I have that as the fourth topic on the meeting. I don't know if we want to get yeah, I, I, today if people want to look at it. Um, uh, Tim, I am very sorry, but I think we'll be running out of time yeah. by the time we get to the fourth topic we because we're already a bit over. So if that's okay, yeah, let's take it offline and definitely mm -hmm. like discuss again in two weeks all, all the aspects, all right? Sorry, yeah. I want to give a chance to the next two topics. So. Real quick, I, yeah, I sent mail on all the points I would discuss. So if people just want to check that mail, then we can do it off on the email. That's fine. Great, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, John. Uh, and there was, uh, I think, somebody else who did the demo, but I missed the name. So. Yeah. Sure. Right. Sure. We yeah. Thank you. All right, so let's move on to the second topic, which is uh, discuss traffic ownership controlling policy governance with this authorization. So Andrew uh, like requested we make a community decision basically because there were like multiple proposals. Uh, there was the the like RFE traffic ownership proposal by Brian from Aspen Mesh, and also there was uh, Limin presented as an uh, RPAC or controlling policy governance with this authorization and RBAC rules, right? So uh, we, we need to make a decision on that. And I think we may need to separate the various aspects of this problem. So I think Louis, I briefly chatted with you and you had like some idea on like how we should separate the concerns here so that we right. don't- Right, there, there are kind of three major API design things in flight right now. Um, and they kind of have a natural priority. The first one is um, network scoping, right? The, the ability to downscope the amount of network configuration that we deliver under operator control so we don't have N squared networking config problems, which is where we are today. And we have customers suffering with those issues. Uh, then the second one is this one, right? The, the traffic ownership issue. And then the third one is whether we want to support delegation or not. Uh, as an explicit API feature. Um, clearly not all three of those things are going to get resolved in the one to one time frame. Um, and given that we've implemented merging, at least a limited form of merging, I, I suggest we put the, the delegation thing, well, it, it, it's, it's just not going to get reviewed or done in that time frame because these are pretty large features and that we don't even have a proposal yet for scoping that's formal, but we have to have one. And so that, that is the priority for people who would be doing reviewed. Um, um, so coming back to traffic ownership and governance, I haven't had the time to go and do follow-ups with the people who provided comments. Um, so I actually don't have a firm sense about which one is a better solution right now. Um, Shriram, do you? Um, no. I mean, like all I see is that since we added that simple merging, I mean, we have not seen that many the gateway issues like, you know, I author, you author, and like the, the cross authorship issues. But yeah, it would be nice to actually validate with the same users who actually complained for like you know, the uh, authorship and other stuff to see if the simple merging actually made sense or if they need something more sophisticated where. You know, you could actually try the traffic ownership proposal style things or the you know, other. Well, the traffic ownership is orthogonal to delegation or merging. Oh, the delegation, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, delegate. I think. Right. We already know de delegation and merging. Given that we have merging, delegation is the lowest priority of the three things to resolve. Yeah, that, yeah I agree. Yeah. And, and for that, I think we need to seriously consider the implication of RBAC. I mean, can we use RBAC? How much RBAC can we use for, for this kind of stuff? Because if we can leverage RBAC for this stuff, it's probably better for For, for delegation? For delegation. Or, um, by, by that, you mean really we have merging and RBAC control. Yeah. Right. So is merging and RBAC control sufficient to meet 90% of the use cases of what delegation was trying to do? We need to find out. Right. Um, so now we, the, the, uh, the issue we're trying to talk about here is we have two different RBAC specifications for network namespace ownership declaration. Right. right. 
So one way is what like Liming proposed, and the other one is I think it was originally Brian who proposed, but now Andrew is taking over that okay. proposal. So so I, like, I I don't know. Andrew, has the document updated much since Brian wrote it? Because that's the last time that I looked at it. Um, no, not really. And um, you know, I was kind of looking at this. I think almost that if we decide what kind of interface we want out of this for users, then I think that there may be even parts of either one. Like I don't think that this has to be a A or B decision right now. I think it's okay for us to decide how much do we want to involve existing RMAC systems or how much we want to make our own authorization RMAC system. That was kind of the level that I think would be satisfying you know, for this kind of discussion. Right, so the only other RMAC system that's currently in place aside from the Istio RBAC system, which is at currently traffic level, is the Kubernetes network policy. Right, so my perspective on the, the, the first traffic ownership one is that it relies on somebody else's RBAC system. Kubernetes is an example. It, right. sort of, it delegates that to the environment. That is right. a, different than the um, traffic governance pr uh, proposal, which sort of brings along its own RBAC. And so fundamentally, I think that that's sort of the biggest question. Is this a thing where you just try to declare objects and let somebody else's RBAC manage it? Or do we say Istio needs to say what uh, like RBAC rules apply for defining these policy objects? Uh, are you talking about Istio RBAC, the one we use today for, for Istio policy, or, or are you talking about a third RBAC? No, Istio. Istio RBAC no, is the ones that yeah. we have today. Yeah. Well, no, remember, like there's, there's Kubernetes RBAC and Istio RBAC. Yes. Istio RBAC is similar to Kubernetes RBAC yeah. in style in some respects, but it has some differences. Yes. Right. right. It talks about a different domain. It talks about traffic sure. instead of about resources. Now we're talking about using the Istio RBAC basic syntax and properties to control something which is declarative, yeah. which is network namespace. Yeah. Um, but still the same implementation, same implementation, same concept, same. Right. So it's the, the same syntax, the same logical structure, yeah. the same compositional model. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the same question to ask here is not one of like which RBAC model, but whether, whether we want to actually go down the delegation path. Right? I mean, RBAC or not, the, the traffic ownership thing has this delegation model, which is like from one country, you can chain it out to the other one and so on. Which is no, no, but like the traffic ownership stuff affects service entry and like all, all the other aspects of name declaration, Sri Ram. It's not just about virtual service composition. Wasn't this the yeah. one that the, the uh, this was the one, the gateway delegation stuff, right? It was spawned by that, but they're separate. And I, I really think that we don't have to worry about the delegation thing. Um, I'm not trying to sneak the nose of the camel yeah. in on that. Yeah. That could be a separate, totally separate thing. We should decide what okay. about traffic ownership. Right, so th this would constrain, you know, the ability of a namespace owner to be able to create a virtual service or just a service entry for a particular host name or declare a gateway for that host name or an IP. One uh, slight uh, change, I mean, that, that I want to bring up is that we are discussing uh, isolating namespaces. So, so, so right. you can with with the, with the other proposal to prune the graph, we are discussing that a mode where resources define your namespace are only visible inside that namespace and nowhere excite, outside, unless explicitly exported, which would slightly change the semantics here because then in in a namespace you could define whatever you want. But well, I, I still don't think we want to allow within a namespace that you are allowed to do whatever you want. Well, you are allowed to do whatever the admin lets you do within the namespace. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, you can do whatever the admin, but but without affecting other namespaces. So it's not, right. no yes. a problem of impacting other things. You can do whatever you are allowed to do, uh -huh. uh, including defining host names that other namespaces define. But you are you are still uh, not having other people basically. Right. So there, there is a question. Uh, so let's introduce something of an ordering question because if we prioritize doing the namespace segregation without, say, doing the name the, the network name control within the namespace, it still gives a certain amount of protection at the global level or across namespace boundaries because one namespace owner can't interfere interfere with the other, um, or at least it starts to go down that direction. Although there are still things they could do, particularly when binding to gateways that we would want to make sure would be covered, and I don't think would be entirely covered by that. Part of it can be still covered, except the host name, yeah. So there is not a complete solution, but it will solve some of the high okay. pain points, I think. So is, this is what you named like the first priority network scoping, because it's related to the graph running we're yes. trying to do in yes, a very that, short that time is, frame, right? That so is blocking 
yeah, people from having seriously large deployments. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, 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 like the, the discussions I've had with people, we've only just gotten to the point where we started talking about the RBAC controller or the networking names. Um, I haven't had a chance to go back and look at the proposal, so I don't really feel like I can provide useful feedback right now in this meeting. Um, it's not that I don't, I want this to drag on. <laughs> um, and there's been... How is this decision actually going to be made? Right, that's a great question. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. So for now, uh, it's definitely not going to be hierarchical, right? It's not like uh, somebody will come and say, we do that or we don't do that. It also, it matters um, like on whoever wants to work on it. For instance, if um, Andrew wants to work on it no matter what, right, then we can maybe decide on what recommendations to that give. Affect, anything right? that affects the API, yeah. right? Cannot be done in an ad hoc way. It cannot be done, but so right. But I, um, I don't think that was affecting the API. I think this the does, right? that, no, that, no, that, no. That, both of these are API changes. Okay. So I'll, I'll say that um, we do have uh, users who need this to move to the next stage with their deployments. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that um, one option here, if we can figure it out, is if it can be something that's additive and on the side. Like for instance, when I looked at this last time, I almost feel like you could compile traffic claims down to uh, the operator roles and operator role bindings if you had to. So if what it is is that we provide one to our users and then um, the migration path to the other if we decide that that's what we want to do, and if this is a prototype or an extension or in our own namespace, that's okay. I just wanted to see how far I could get to some resolution here before going off and doing something that's going to impact everybody else. So let's take a survey within within the attendees now right i mean i guess the first thing is does everybody understand the two proposals do people have a preference for what the proposals are representing if there is a reasonable migration path between the two proposals moving from one layer of sophistication to another is that documented and can they be combined in one? because if they can be combined in one proposal i think we'll avoid the choice right and, and you know the brutal hard thing is like, do we have to go and kind of do A-B testing with users to get like, if not actually implement it, but go in front of them and write, write up a doc and say, you can have A or B, which one would you prefer? Which would actually be a useful exercise. And you know, I'm, I'm, if somebody could write that up, I can get the product managers here to go run that in front of some customers and get some feedback. Um, well, so let's, well, let's do the first part of the survey, which is, do people understand what the proposals are? Do they have a preference for which of the proposals and can they state why they prefer A over B? We don't have to do that right now, right now, but some something should have that documented. I can send a Google form to Istio networking mailing list. And yeah, that would be great. Would reply sure. with that, right? So uh, the, uh, I think Spike brought a very good point here is that we don't have a framework for making decisions. So it's not quite clear how we make decisions right, so within the working group or in I, general. One right? thing I did want to cover <laughs> Uh, orthogonal to this is we should at least delineate what are the the working proposals and what are the prior a, a ranked order of those prior proposals within the working group so that we at least understand the agenda of things we're trying to resolve and their relative priority to each other mm -hmm. and then we try and make a commitment to say look we're going to try and get through this many so at least we're communicating what we're trying to do I, I, I would add one, one, one comment here. Uh, I think both implementation, but both, both proposals will share kind of the same kind of code. In the end, there will be some code that has some. No, 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 no. So uh, I'm saying that this, this, the, the, the API surface and the actual implementation can be slightly decoupled, and we can have a prototype that implements most of the code, and we can you know kind of do the A B testing, real A B testing. I mean, it's uh, not. I, uh, I guess the implementation, yeah. yeah. The implementation may all be in the admission controller. Yeah, it's been getting most likely. Yeah, that's but the user of... experience is kind of different. Mm -hmm. Like for traffic okay. owner uh, proposal, you basically define uh, uh, you basically uh, define a uh, uh, ownership uh, CRD and uh, uh, put all the networking objects uh, belong to associate all the network objects as a, along uh, with a uh, namespace. Yeah. Uh, then then basically assign the uh, permission to the namespace admin. Uh, to, uh, to understood, but in the end, you end up with a data structure in both cases yeah. that has or a function that 
they will use some data structure to answer yes or no, are you allowed to define this resource or not? So it's not, in the end, you probably construct the same data structure, use kind of the same code to make the decision. The, the code module may be reused. I mean, the user experience is kind of different. Yeah. Why is it kind of like a, uh, yeah, so user experience is a little bit of uh, interaction, yeah. but yeah. And maybe we the find a different one. Basically, yeah. uh, directly assign user to manage this uh, network object. Mm -hmm. I think it's hard yeah. to share. You know, in UI application, you, you, you design an application, you have the core, and then you try different UIs and kind of to see which one. And those the UI, I mean, the user experience may change quite dramatically, but still have the same core. So that's what I'm trying to say, that yeah. if we can have a prototype or two, or three, it will make the decision much easier than than uh, on paper. Right, and it's also like whether we can get any of these done, right? Like oh. for instance, I mean, I'm not sure what are your like plans to, let's say, deliver this or have a prototype, because if this is going to happen in two years from now, then it's not going to help the customers who would rather go with any approach just to have it, yeah. right? Yeah. It has to go to uh, Yeah. Sorry. To Costin's point, I mean, looking at, the, I mean, sorry, I had to refresh my memory. So to Costin's point, this is, I mean, the crux of this thing is whether Pilot will do in-place validation and rejection of configuration or whether we will do this in an admission controller. And then within Pilot, we just treat everything as like, you know, this, this is blessed right. configuration, we won't touch it. And so, right. As a first start, we could actually do the other, the external one, where as an admission controller, we can define one or both approaches, which defines like which configuration is going to be accepted. And whatever comes into pilot is we just treat it as like, okay, this is all already allowed configuration and we continue doing the stuff that mm -hmm. So I, I yeah. hear you, Shriram. I don't think that um, where the code runs is the most important part of either of the proposals. Mm -hmm. I think that it's more. What are you asking the user to do? The, right. the well, user experience. I, I definitely agree with that. What I'm saying is that the the question right now is in terms of implementation complexity and whether this will actually be something that we can revert or not revert, and how do you con conduct the experiment, right? And so from that point of view, if for Shri, an actual, Shri, Shri, I'm, I don't think we need to conduct an experiment in code to make a decision. I don't think that's necessary, and I, I also don't think it's appropriate, right? It's it's much easier to go get user feedback. Right, because what mostly we're talking about is user experience here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the, I'm not worried about the implementation detail at all. Yeah, that's right. Right. User experience, we can actually get a much bigger actual live audience if we just have two versions of the same admission controller, and then we can it's honestly, Shreem, it's just as easy to give them a doc and say, "This is A, this is B. Which one do you understand?" Right. Yeah, but understanding is different from actual real life usage. Yep. Them, and they yeah. would actually definitely see like a ton of emails on the mailing list saying, "Hey, this is not working. What the heck is this?" And at that point, either way, the feature will be alpha, right? Yes, but I mean, at that point, I mean, it might as well be good use of it and have two different admission controllers. And as part of our installation, we say, hey, why don't you try this out and tell us which one works best for your needs? And then we can collect feedback, usage numbers, or whatever it is by the next release and say, hey, this one actually really worked, not just from product managers to one or two customers where. And mind you, you actually, your product manager is actually going to go to some top-notch executive. He's not going to go. Sit no, no, sure. Yeah. That's not how we do it, right? We actually go talk to the, the people doing the deployment. <laughs> but but, but uh, I kind of agree with Shiram on one thing. Uh, the, the person who, I mean, reviewing a document and reviewing the two one by side by side is one thing. Using it in a real environment, you have our real ARBA rules, you have real stuff. And I mean, it, it, it's a very different experience to have the whole right, that's, that's the reason happens. why it's, it, no matter what happens this is going to be alpha uh, that's no question <laughs> about this, right but. and uh, the, the, there is there is some effort involved in like making the prototype work right and yeah. <laughs> it's, well, uh, i mean like both like in the aspen mesh folks and lemon can actually work do both and right, but the, the, the worst case scenario is we have customers using one and customers using the other right but it's alpha right yeah. it's not the well, right but then when you tell one of them you're going to turn one of those features down, mm -hmm. right? That's a very expensive thing to do to a customer. Yeah, yeah. It's brutal. Start using it. Yeah, that, that's true. Right. Right. So we would be much better off not committing to either. Right. But the other and thing, putting customers in an uncertain state. So can we can we actually start by having some sort of survey based just based on documentation, like just gather some preliminary data and discuss again, like in two weeks from now, right? So my point it doesn't have to be part of the release. R is still release, right? Just like the CNI comes out of a, as a separate ecosystem project, these yeah. things can come as an ecosystem project, which is a voluntary add-on that people know the risk. They actually opt into it and say, "I'm going to try this thing. If it works well for me." I'm going to vouch for it. If it doesn't work well for me, I'm going to dump this thing. 
Yeah. And in practice, in practice, you already said we tell people, hey, use CI CD to with whatever you want to achieve the same result. So technically, probably there are a dozen scripts around that are achieving this kind of right. It's clearly the, the, the logical feature itself is additive. Yeah. There's there's no argument that this is can be layered on top by like you, you could go in theory and use OPA today to do this, right? Yeah. With the OPA admission controller, more or less. Um, oh. It's whether it's an intrinsic documented feature that's built into Istio or not. Um, and then there's a separate thing about whether we want two or one, even well, if it's an add-on. Or, or, or N. I mean, uh, N is also an option because in reality, this is... Well, no, we, there's, there's a difference it's, it's between it's we, yeah. right, the Istio community, and what people outside the Istio community do. Yeah. Now, I think we all agree that some control over this yeah. is an intrinsic feature of the product. Yes. Is there any disagreement about that part? Okay. Whether it should be intrinsic right now or whether it can be intrinsic after a public judgment is the question, right? No, 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 no just the, the feature, Shri, not the implementation. No, the feature, yes. Okay. Yeah. Even with the current, hey, use your own CI CD system and shell scripts to. Right, we still yeah, want to give, yeah. have an intrinsic feature that lets people control who can declare what network names. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you know uh, what I will do for now. I will just send the survey with the link to both proposals. Right. Uh, it would be great, Andre, if you could actually separate the delegation from yeah. that document, right? So that people don't get confused over the delegation. So, so, so maybe, address maybe, just the traffic ownership part within the document. It is called traffic ownership. There was a link to the delegation because that was sort of what inspired it. I'll oh, take okay. Out. It's just an example, but All right. you don't need to have a distracting example in there. So I'll take that out. So okay. well, why don't you, Andrew and Li Min, work on the survey together to mm -hmm. make sure we get the right kind of questions asked? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, maybe and, some and, kind of user guide. And maybe it's useful how, how to create, you, create a document yeah, which is like a decision yeah. document. Would A be, would a be I mean, left uh, one proposal as the other one, or right? I mean, how will you achieve well, the So I think there's a survey in a doc. Yeah. And the doc is uh, like compare and contrast the two proposals, right? And can contain some additional context and samples. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. there's the survey, which is we probably yeah. use sheets but for that. We should have some send it like just your yeah. networking, guide, the option, your users, option one, option two, uh, and customers. Yeah. I think yeah. that option A option B is the best way to make informed decisions in, in yeah. for the survey. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so that would be like yeah, having more yeah, metrics because do not mention the yeah, delegation or anything, just the basic yeah, no, feature. The delegation yeah, is an entirely separate how, feature. It's not part of this decision. OK, so we'll do that. And we'll follow up on, on via emails about that, all right? And um, I, I'm i sorry, Robert, you are like, uh, you only okay. have like six minutes left, or like unless we go for the meeting like usual to discuss the sidecar lifecycle management. Well, uh, there, there was a question in here, and I think, I think it's relevant. Like, oh, sorry, Robert, I just don't think we're going to get to your subject at all. <laughs> Was about how do, how do we actually make progress? Right, we're, we're still learning how to make progress yeah. nominally. Right, there's consensus within the community, and the leads understand what the proposals mean and are comfortable with them. And if the feature is important enough, somebody from the TOC might get involved and need to feel comfortable too, so that they can represent that feature to the TOC. Now, Sri Ram and I can do that in this context. Um, the, the leads for networking right now are you, uh, Sri Ram, and uh, Christopher, right? Yeah. Um, do you understand the merits of both proposals? Uh, not entirely to make a decision. Okay. But but so that's the question. Do we? Make a decision as a group. Do we make? Uh, there are multiple ways to make decision. You either have like consensus as a group, or you have a small group getting input, making the decision. Or so, you have, so right, like uh, ideally, we would have consensus, right? So that's what we should always strive for. If we cannot arrive at consensus, and a decision still has to be made, mm -hmm. right? That's what leads are for, and what that's what the TOC is for. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that clears us up. But let's keep working for consensus. But that requires a lot of work in everybody's part. Right, so right. Decisions don't happen quickly when consensus is the goal. So the other thing that might need to happen is if we're not getting to consensus, and it's not because it's, it's because people don't have the time, right? Then we should have an escalation, which is look, consensus is not converging, not because of 
massive dissent, but because of lack of community commitment, mm -hmm. then we go to a more formal escalation process, right? And the leads and the TFC just step in. Okay, yeah. Does that sound reasonable to everybody? Because the one thing like I've seen happen in Kubernetes is they always try to get to consensus. And there were many cases where the community collectively couldn't put the effort in. And so it would just drag forever. And we, that's the one thing we don't want to happen, right? That's the worst possible outcome, right? Either way, we want one of these two solutions to happen. Yeah, it's better to have something than nothing. And so it's... Yeah. Like, yes, yes. If there was strong consensus on doing exactly Lemon's proposal, I think that we would just go ahead with that right now. What we're yeah. worried about is that there's no consensus on what's going to happen here. So any complexity means we'll just be revisiting this later. Okay, so let's 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 set a timeline. Let's do the survey. If there's no obvious consensus, we'll run an escalation. Okay. So like like by next networking meeting, let's plan on like you know just taking one or the other implementation. By the next meeting, next. Meeting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, so, so, so the escalation process is with the leads and the TOC. So maybe the next thing is to bring this subject to the TO, put it on the TOC schedule. If we can't come, to, we can, it can't come right? to complete consensus. Like ideally, they shouldn't get to the TOC, TOC because it's very like networking well, related. They, well, be a little careful, right? Because mm -hmm. it aligns with security features. Mm. Right, so it's not just networking, okay. right? So I actually do want to make sure the security people are, are paying attention to this tip. And, All right. And overlap I see. With, uh, with the exposition policies and other yes. stuff. It's, it's yes. Kind of it, 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 yeah. Okay. So there's a large d domain of alignment. So uh, just being honest, I, I think, well, if consensus means the leads have bought in anyway, so I think that covers it. If we can get to consensus, mm -hmm. if we don't get to consensus, then it's the leads and the TOC. It might be to the TOC anyway, because it's an impactful feature and it affects a right now we're in a situation where anything that affects the APIs, right? We were very ad hoc in terms of coordinating across APIs across the different domains, and we're suffering a little bit because of that. And there was a discussion in the TOC two weeks ago about this, and we want to get to a more formal API review process. So even if we have agreed on what the domain and the structure of the API is, it would still get reviewed to make sure that it was syntactically aligned or semantically aligned with other features of the stack. Mm -hmm. Which makes APIs hard, but APIs are the hardest thing we do. Okay. Okay, so let's get the survey done and let's get the AB comparison doc done. Okay, okay, we'll do that. And we, like, I will try and get some user feedback. I, I think that's important. All right. Okay. So for next week, then we will continue with the, like uh, generally the CNI and the sidecar lifecycle management. Like Robert, your your proposal, we, it, it ties in very well with everything related to CNI. It seems that there is a general consensus about like going forward with the CNI approach anyway, right? And we will also like discuss the survey results and make a decision. So hopefully the and there will be actually one more third item on the agenda. I don't even know if we'll have time about service entry namespacing, which I keep postponing. Yeah. So the and other, that also is like fairly important to solve. Yeah. So I think yes. So as I mentioned in the notes, we should have the prioritized list of things to resolve. Mm -hmm. And if we have to burn an entire community meeting just to resolve one of those things because it's an iceberg. And we do that. Yeah. And maybe we have we up the frequency of the community meetings to meet that need. Yeah, exactly. So we might need to do that. So we don't, we don't have to rigidly meet every two weeks. We can, yeah. we, we can meet daily if we have to. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> all right. OK, right. well, yeah. so thank you very that. much. I already lost all yeah. the people in this Thanks, room. Everyone. So Thanks, see you in two weeks for now. Bye. Hopefully, no. Bye. 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 Bye.